Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics, where it is easier than you think. I'm your host, Graham Henderson. This particular video is a rather special and unique one. In the last few videos, I've been showing you how to draw the graphs of polynomial equations when they're factorised by studying their roots. And I've also, also shown you how to construct polynomial equations given their graph by studying their roots and their y-intercept. All of this skill has been based on our understanding of zeros. That is that when we have a, a product of a number of factors making zero, then each of those factors may be zero. We're going to use that information plus an understanding of an, another simple curve and another principle, a third principle, to construct what I hope will be a rather unique thing for you, and that is I'm going to attempt in this one video, and perhaps even without editing, as a, an uninterrupted video, to construct the words I love you on graph paper with just one equation. So follow me carefully, if you will. The first principle is this. If, you're, if I wish to construct an ellipse, a long, thin one, that goes through A and minus A, and B and minus B, it has something like the equation for a circle. X squared plus Y squared equals radius squared. I'm going to use 1. And the way we get x to go from a to minus a is to do this. You can see that when y is worth 0, when x is worth a, we get a squared over a squared, which is 1. And when x is minus a, we get minus a all squared, which is plus a squared over a squared, which is 1 also. So this is a rather clever way of distorting the x-axis. And similarly, to distort the y-axis, we do this. So I think you can see that when y is equal to b and x is 0 because we're on the y-axis, when y equals b, we get b squared over b squared is 1, and the same occurs at minus b. So the question is, how can I construct a line that appears to be a single vertical straight line? Well, obviously I need to bring these in, and I need a to be a very, very tiny number. So if a is a very tiny number like 1 thousandth, for example, then you can see that when I'm dividing by a fraction, this denominator appears up the top. So I would have something like 1,000 squared x squared plus y squared over. I haven't decided what I want to do with b yet. Uh, let's make it go from 2 to minus 2. Then this would be... 2 squared equals 1. I can probably write this a little more compactly by changing 1,000 squared, which is a million, to 10 to the power 6, because I'm going to need every bit of room I can get. And I think you'll agree that if I bring the 1 over to this side, that that also is a true form for the equation of this particular ellipse. So this ellipse now goes from minus 2 to plus 2 and from plus 1,000th to minus 1,000th. So it's basically a line interval, at least to the naked eye, and that's what I'm trying to do. So that's step number one, is to create a line interval like the letter I, or the descender on the letter L. That's what we need. Second thing is, how do we move graphs around the coordinate plane, the Cartesian plane? The fact is that we have to distort the x-axis again, simply by adding or subtracting values. To move it down to here, so the line would appear down here, for example, through minus 5. 
our adjustment would be not to anything on the y-axis, but simply to do this. And this particular uh, ellipse has now moved here. So we now have a stratagem or a strategy whereby we can create what appears to be a line interval and we can move it. So far, so good. Well, I did have to stop and clean the board, but let's continue. I'm going to plan out on a very long x-axis where my letters will go. I'm going to need quite a few gaps. This is unplanned, unrehearsed, and I've never done it before. Uh, it's just an idea I had a few days ago to share with you. But let's try it. Minus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We'll do that. Minus 14, minus 12, minus 10, minus 8, minus 6, minus 4, minus 2. Just marking every second one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, let's try and put, we want I love you, we can probably get love here, let's try and put, put the E there for example. Now I told you the U at this stage will have, the V will have to look a bit like a U. Uh, there's our O, there's our L, leave a gap of perhaps three. I love, leave another gap of three between the words, and we have Y, O, they'll go up to 14, U. And let's see if we can generate one equation that produces all of this material. Now you can see that I'm going to have to write fairly small, but this vertical line, Y equals, you're going to enjoy this. This vertical line is that very that same para, uh, ellipse that we were talking about before. So it's going to be 10 to the 6, and to move the x value down to minus 11, it'll be x plus 11 squared, and it's going to be y squared on 2 squared minus 1. If this expression is 0, Sorry, I don't need that. You can see this is very unrehearsed. But if this expression is zero, then it will construct that graph. The next one, I want this line, and it's going to look the same. 10 to the 6, going through minus 8. So it's x plus 8 squared, plus y squared on 2 squared, minus 1. If that expression there, if that factor is equal to zero, it will create that line. Let's do the next vertical line. This one goes through minus 5. You can see this is going to get a little bit boring. So I might actually speed this up on the camera. The next vertical line is through minus 3. x plus 3 squared plus y squared on 2 squared minus 1. Where we've we done that one, we've got the one through minus two. The one through zero, that's just going to be our ordinary uh, vertical ellipse. One through one. I'll just do the long ones first. So 1 through 8. If I can squeeze it in here, we'll get the 1 through 9.
1 through 11, 12 and 14. That's got all those vertical ones done. Now this one's a bit more tricky. We want it to start down at the origin going from, instead of plus two to minus two, we just want it plus one to minus one. We're going to shift it so it centre moves from the origin to there. And it's going to look like, same width, so the X value business won't change. It's going to move to X equals six. The Y value is going to move up to Y equals 1. And I'll, I'll write it in, but it's going to go from plus to minus 1, so that's a bit redundant. That has now got that descender there, so we've got all of our descenders in place. Let's now deal with the horizontals. If we had a horizontal, then we want, we want the ellipse to have a very small vertical dimension and to be quite long horizontally. So that is, we're going to swap these two coefficients around and I want it only to be two units long, so x squared will be over one squared, I'll, I'll write it in. And this time we're going to have 10 to the 6 y squared uh, minus 1. But I want it moved to here, for example, where the centre is at x equals minus 9 and y equals minus 2. So I want x plus 9 squared and y plus 2 squared. I hope that made sense to you. I haven't really uh, taught you how to do this yet. I'll be creating some videos describing it. And now we want to create these other horizontal lines. So we've got one uh, centred at uh, minus 4 plus 2. So it's going to be x plus 4 squared. Uh, I won't write the 1 squared. Uh, plus... 10 to the 6, y minus 2, squared minus 1. I should be using parentheses and, brace and brackets, but I won't start now. We'll just embed parentheses. This one here, let's speed up, is going to be x minus 4, x plus 4 squared rather, uh, plus 10 to the 6, y plus 2, squared minus 1 which makes it go through minus 4, minus 2. There it is. This one here is through minus 1, minus 2. So we're going to have x plus 1 squared plus 10 to the 6, y plus 2 squared minus 1. We've done that one. We've still got a few to go. This one here is at 2, 2 x minus 2 squared and 10 to the 6 y minus 2 squared minus 1. This one here at uh, 2 negative 2, x minus 2 squared plus 10 to the 6 y plus 2 squared minus 1. I'll come back to this one. This one here is only moved up to x equals 7, y equals 0. So the x minus 7 squared plus 10 to the 6 y squared minus 1. This one here at 7 negative 2. x minus 7 squared plus 10 to the 6 y plus 2 squared minus 1. Three and a half to go. This one here is at 10, 2. So we've got x minus 10 squared and 10 to the 6, y minus 2 squared minus 1. 
and negative 2, or x, oh, I'm, I'm obviously getting tired, this is a long equation. Uh, x minus 10 squared, that's correct, plus 10 to the 6, y plus 2 squared minus 1. This one here is at uh, 13 minus 2, so it'll be x minus 13 squared and 10 to the 6, y plus 2 squared minus 1. And we've just got this one to do. Now this one, the centre is going to be at one and a half, zero, and it's going to be extended horizontally half a unit in each direction. So, I think this will just show on the, the video. We want x minus 1.5 squared, that will locate it correctly. To get the right dimensions, we want to divide by a half squared, so I'm going to put a 4 out the front, plus 10 to the 6, uh, y squared minus 1, and I'll set it all equal to 0. That is one equation. Now, why does it work? Well, the principle is this. If I choose any particular x or y value, every single one of these terms, every single one of these factors, has a value. That is, the entire expression is fully defined for every x and y value. That's important. But if you take any particular factor, because here we have a multitude of factors multiplying to make zero, so any one of them could be zero. If you made that one zero, then it creates, or it defines, the graph where x is 12 and y is zero, 12 and zero, and it creates that vertical line. If we chose this one here, it's when x is negative four and y is negative two, negative four, negative two, and it creates this horizontal line. So every part of this equation has a job to do and creates a separate little part of the graph. And I hope you've found that an interesting exercise. I don't recommend it. Well, you can do what you like with it. But it does show you the principle that when you have a, an equation fully factorised, each factor, when it equals zero, can create an interesting part of the curve for you. Now, I know that's been a bit of a fumble. I decided to do it so you could see me ad lib. I hope you've enjoyed the experience and learned from it. There'll be an interesting worksheet created which will encourage you to draw graphs like circles with crosses through and all that sort of business. Uh, if you're interested in doing that and interested in learning the skills, then please look at the description below the video and download the worksheet. It's a PDF file, there's no charge. Uh, just have fun and enjoy your mathematics. Thank you for watching.